Okay, so my question very simply was Jesus born from Mary's womb? That was the simple question. Yes, well, that's the answer is yes. That, okay, that's the answer, yes. 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 Okay, so let me understand this now, a deeper understanding. God, who is not separable, so he is still God, was in the belly of a woman and came out of the womb of a woman. God did. God took on a human nature and was really born. So, so, so your belief is that that one great creator came out of the womb, the vagina of a woman. Absolutely. Right, well, thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Just to show you Muslims how stupid what he just said. He just said, are you saying to me that God is coming out of a vagina? This is what he said. I want to say to you the same. Isn't it your God who put his mouth in the vagina of Mary and the Quran says, and we breathe into it? If coming out of the vagina will insult, will be an insult to God, that means God is not holy for anything can make him dirty. So if you mean a vagina is dirty, that's mean your prophet Muhammad is dirty too. For he himself, he came from a vagina. And then he recited the Quran, which means the Quran coming from a mouth, and the mouth was in the vagina. So this is the mouth of the vagina was talking, his name is Muhammad, and now he is reciting Quran. So are you saying to me that the word of Allah was in the mouth of Muhammad, which was was inside the vagina of his mother? They try to make Jesus look down by saying he is born of a vagina. But my friend, if God is holy, he is always holy. So what you are saying to me that your God in Islam, he cannot be holy if we make him come through a vagina. He got dirty, he need a shower. For he is not God, but for a true God, he is always holy. And this is again a contradiction for his stupid prophet. Because let us show you what the Quran say. He said, okay, are you saying your holy God, the God, the creator, he came out of a vagina? They said to him, yes. He said, okay, thank you, thank you. I got you busted. Okay, thank you. You stupid. If this is not good, so why your stupid Quran? called Jesus holy and he is the one is born of a vagina are you saying that holiness can come out of a vagina Abdul do you see how silly they are but their question is a great example for the Christians to show you how they try to run away from a clear answer and actually here we can go to different topic is God is always holy or not? What he just said is against his religion, not against us. What he just said is against his religion, not against us. What he just said is against his religion, not against us. For God is always holy, it doesn't matter what he is. You see, the light of the sun, and this is a sun created by God. When the light of the sun touched the water which is dirty, full of bacteria, or let us give a better example. Muhammad is taking a shower with dead dogs. And women have blood from period. And a stinky garbage, as the hadith, as you see, it says in the front of us. Muslims, your prophet says that water is always pure and nothing make it impure. And remember, in the hadith here it says that there is menstrual clothing and women blood from their menstruation. So the blood of women was touching your prophet all over. And in the top of that, your prophet was washing with it. And the top of that, your prophet claimed that water is always pure and nothing made it impure, even the blood of the women. And if the man or the women is 90% of it or maybe 95% of it is a water, then the water is always pure. And in the same time, how come the Muslims, they get disgusted because the idea that Jesus is born of Mary and the Quran described Mary as a pure woman and the Quran described Jesus as a pure person and he is holy, chapter 19, verse 19. In the top of that, as the Quran and Muhammad they describe, describe that the blood of women will not make you dirty. And those are blood coming specifically from the vagina. It's not coming from the nose of the women. 
Here you see the hypocrisy and the double standard. Now, our point of view as a Christians, that God is always holy, so it doesn't matter where he's coming to or going from, for holy is holy. If God cannot be holy for changing location, that means he is not God. And this is what he just admitted, that his God, if he come from a vagina, he will not be God. So the God of Islam is not God always, is God only if he is in heaven. But if he is coming from a vagina, he is not God. In the same time, the Quran says that Allah, he breathed into her vagina. Now the Muslim, they try to explain to you, they say, no, it doesn't say vagina, it says her sleeves. Ah, uh, Allah is the sleeve breathing? The verse, in, it says it clearly. We breathe into her vagina. And the word there is vagina. And in the translation, look what they do. It says breathe into her body. You know what? Let us go with this lie. Breathe into her body, not vagina. So if mere, if God is God, why God is a breathing anyway? You see, they keep saying to us, Allah is not like anything. Okay, we got that. Allah is not like a human. He is not a man. So he don't do what man do. But here we see that Allah, he breathed like every person who he breathed. And now Allah, he breathed into the body of Mary. And then that's mean that Allah, he put his mouth somewhere in her body and he breathed. So is Allah touching something not holy and that will make him unholy? And the verse says it clearly, her vagina, the Quran confirmed that the body of Mary is pure. She's a special person. It says, and Mary, the daughter of Amran, and this is additional stupid Quran, saying that Mary, she is the daughter of Amran, which is Amran is the father of Moses and the father of Aaron. And because the stupid Muhammad, he thought that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron, he made a chapter saying that Mary, she is the daughter of Amran. Can you believe it? And when the Muslim, they try to defend, they say, oh, the prophet, he did not really mean that she is his sister for real. But you either, don't you see, it says she is the daughter of Amran. It's too late. A Jewish man, he came to Aisha and he said, hey, I, I, you know, Mary, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, is not the same Maryam, the sister of Aaron. And then they told Muhammad and Muhammad wanted to fix it. But it's too late because Muhammad, he have a chapter. It's called the chapter of Ali Amran. And actually, this is one of the chapters is going to come in the judgment day as a cloud. Al Imran. Who is Imran? This is according to Muhammad, the father of Mary. And Muhammad here even mistaken. It's not Imran. It is Umran. You know, Umran, sorry, which is according to the Bible. So even here, Muhammad, the fool, he made Mary. You know, if you go in the Old Testament, you will find that Aaron, and Moses, says they have a sister, her name is Maryam. And this is exactly what the word in the Quran says, Maryam, the same name. And Maryam is the sister of Aaron, and Maryam is the daughter of Amran, proving to us again that Muhammad is a fraud. But anyway, we don't want to change our topic. So Allah, he breathed into Mary, private part, and Mary are pure women, and Jesus is a pure and he is holy. My understanding, which I have from other Muslims, which is part and parcel of why I hold them, and have read in the Islamic sources, that the Quran itself does intercede for Muslims, or will, on the Day of Judgment, right? The Quran will appear as a pale man and will say that he was the Muslim's companion in life and will intercede for him. Is that not correct? Can you give me a reference for that? That's in the Hadith. Which Hadith? I'm serious, you don't... Take a note, he just said, when he said to him, the Quran will appear as a pale man, he said, can you give me a reference? And he shake his head as if he is wondering, as if he heard it for the first time. I mean, how you are saying, give me a reference, and now later you will say to them, you will say to him, well, I'll, you know, this is weak hadith. I mean, he just acted as if he never heard this before. And now he will say to him, well, this is weak hadith. Correct. Can you give me a reference for that? That's in the Hadith. Which Hadith? 
Seriously, you don't think I'm going to go back? I mean, like, I don't know. Are you saying that's not in the hadith? Uh, that, that is not in any authentic hadith that okay. I've ever read. So you'd say it's not authentic? Oh, that's fine. If you say it's not authentic. This is not an authentic hadith he ever read. Do you remember what I said to you? Take a note that he said he is Hanbali. Do you remember? He said the original of Islam he believe in is like Hanbali. Do you remember what I said to you? Take a note that he said he is Hanbali. Do you remember? He said the original of Islam he believe in is like Hanbali. Do you remember? And this was in the minute 22. Or okay, so then you're talking about the Athari Hanbali Aqeedah, yes. right? Yes. So that was the original Aqeedah from the time of the Prophet وسلم, and that's what I follow today. Or okay, or so then you're talking about the Athari Hanbali Aqeedah, yes. right? Yes. So that was the original Aqeedah from the time of the Prophet وسلم, and that's what I follow today. Okay, so I don't follow Ilm al Kalam at all. In Aqeedah, I don't deal with it. When these Greeks. Hold on, take it easy. So. To say the Quran will appear as a pale man, what did you say it would be with the, the Quran will intercede for Muslims and will say that it as goes, a pale man. Uh, well, that's that's in a Tormidi hadith, for example. Mm. Let's see. Uh, I can look up for you. Let's look for it. Uh, so, no, no, hold on. Because see, I like to discuss on evidences. So, if can I find a hadith in a Tirmidhi that says the Quran will be a pale man? Remember here, he is challenging them to show him the hadith. Can I find this hadith? Let's just find that and then I will explain from there. Okay, so, but that kind of misses the point that I'm making. You're focused on the pale man part, but I think you and I both know that it's classically Islamic to say the Quran would intercede. So let me explain the shifa of the Quran? Yeah, yeah, I'll explain that. Excellent. The Quran is Kalamullah. Yes, sir. What? Told us that well. How the Quran is the Kalam of Allah and is not created by Allah? How you make it belong to Allah if it's not Allah who made it? I mean, do you see the stupidity? If I say the Quran is the word of Allah and then I say that it's not created by Allah, so how it is the, Quran, the word of Allah? Stupidity is amazing. Okay, now we go back to zero. So the Quran will come as a man. The guy he denied the hadith. He says, Can you show me the reference? Claiming that he never heard of it. He wanna see the reference. He wanna see the evidence. Suddenly he wanna talk about evidence. All the time he was just making a speech. Let me explain to you what it's mean that the Quran will intercede. Okay. 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 The Quran that is read by us. When you read the Quran, that Kalam Allah will be a evidence for us. Do you understand what I mean? That the fact that we stayed up at night and read the Quran will make shifa, it will be an intercession. It will not be asking Allah for help or asking Allah separately than anything. It is only the fact that that good deed will be an intercession for you. Like if you had read the actual hadith, it talks about the Quran and another hadith about the Siyam, the fasting. Right? We don't say fasting by itself is an entity, but it's the deed that is inter intercedes for you. So does the hadith say that the deed of yes. reciting the Quran will intercede for you, or does the hadith say the so, Quran will intercede? Again, so, th so this is the thing. When you say the Quran was Siyam, the, the, these two will be Shifa. They will be an intercession. Right? So what does that mean? That it is that deed of reading the Quran. Do you understand what that means? Uh, I understand what you're playing. Okay. That's just not what. So let's see that. Uh, I I searched for it. The first one that popped up. I know it's in Termini, but the first one that popped up was in Ibn in, in Majah. So in Termini, there is no such hadith that says the Quran. There, there is. There is. That's just the first one that popped up. When so I can we look at the Termini one first? Okay, I'll find the Termini one. I just but want notice, to notice uh, the Ibn Majah version says the Quran will. Guys, notice. He said there's no such a hadith in a Termini. Remember that this guy he claimed to be a sheikh. Either he is a fake sheikh and he never heard about it before, or he is a fraud and a liar because he says said in a Tirmidhi there is no such a thing. Listen carefully, I'm not the one saying that. There is no such a thing. So one of two options, either this guy is an ignorant, he do not know, and you have to accept to say, well, I was ignorant and I just learned this from Anthony Roger, who is a Christian, not a Muslim, and he's not a sheikh. A Christian is teaching a Muslim sheikh in his boost. 
that in the Tirmidhi, there's a hadith says, Quran will come as a man interceding. He says, where? There's no such a thing. So either he accepts that he is ignorant, certified idiot, claiming that if he grow a beard, he have knowledge, or he is a certified liar. Choose one. Listen carefully. I know it's in Termini, but the first time the Pop-Tech was in it, it, it logic. So in Termini, there is no such hadith that says the Quran there, there is, there is. There. That's just the first one that popped up when so I did Can we look at the Tirmidhi one first? Okay, I'll send the Tirmidhi one. I just well, notice, you... notice uh, the Ibn Majah version says, the Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man, and will say, I am the one that kept you awake at night and made you thirsty during Excellent. the day. Excellent. So, let's now go to... Hold on, take it easy. You were trying to see that. No, no. Take it easy. This is why... You're not seriously going to go to Google Translate, are you? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I, I know you know You're Arabic. Funny. I know you know Arabic. You know the Arabic keyboard? Uh, oh, no. Okay. Uh, I was just going to show you the takhreej. You know what takhreej is? Okay. The checking of the narration. Okay. This narration of Nimaja is a very weak narration. Uh, they didn't grade it this week. Can you show me their grading? Yeah, it's in Hassan. Well, it's, it's, it's in Arabic now. You just, you just, you just ruined his phone. You can't see anything in English oh, now. <laughs> what did they say? So he, he was saying that this is a weak hadith before even he knew the hadith. Remember, he said there's no such a hadith, which means he never saw it, he never heard of it. And he said, then when they showed him the hadith, he said it's weak. Actually, before they saw him the hadith, he said it's weak. It's in Arabic now. You just, you just ruined his phone. You can't see anything in English oh, now. <laughs> what did they say? Hey, no, no, this is this is Daru Salam, right? So this is not this is not Sunnah.com, just a website. Okay. So, so Daru Salam. Daru Salam is a but publisher, yeah. right? But that's not the grading. Yeah, but they gave the rating according to Hadith scholars, right? They're not just making it up. No, no, no. So, so we need to. I know this Hadith, and that's why I was telling you, right? And I can show you the weakness in it if you like. Dar Salam is a publishing house, not a scholar itself, right? Their reading by itself is not a hujjah. It's not okay, let us go and get this guy busted. Remember, he said that he believed that the Hanbali are the right one. Didn't he say that? Hanbali? Well, this is the book of Ibn Hanbal. Musnad Ahmad Ibn Hanbal. And this is the hadith in the front of us. And here you ask yourself, if this hadith is rejected, how this guy is teaching them about Allah and about the Quran, saying that the Quran will come to you as a pale man? When those people, they say such a thing, read carefully. وَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ يُلْقَ صَاحِبَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ حِينَ يَنْشَقُ عَنْهُ الْقَبْرُ أو قَبْرَهُ كَالرَّجُلِ الشَّاحِبُ This is the book of Ibn Hanbal. And he is using it to explain how the Quran will intercede. So how this coward, he says that he is a, he believed that the Hanbal is the true way of the Prophet. And this is Ibn Hanbal using the Hadith to explain how the Quran will come and intercede. Remember, if this is, if the, if this Hadith is rejected or not valid, there's no way this guy will use it to explain. I mean, have you ever heard of a liar like this? So now if we click it, you know, a translate. Let us see if we can do Google translation. The one who he said, Hadith number 22, Hadith number, as you see in the screen, 22435. This is his master, who he belonged to his sect as he claimed that Ibn Hanbal is the true way of Islam, saying that, the Quran will come as a pale man and he will intercede for the person. Google Translate could not recognize the Arabic language. Here we go. The Quran will meet his companion or the man in the day of resurrection in his grave and he will come to him as a pale man. Pale man. You see it? And this is in the book of Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal, which he claimed that this is the true teaching of the Prophet of Allah. I mean, how we can explain the lies of those liars? And now you admitted that the Quran will intercede, but you are re re rejecting that he will come as a man? And when they show you the hadith, you say to us, it is da'if, what is your reference? 
And why Ibn Hanbal is using it if it's a stupid hadith? Now, are we done? No. What a potato, man. What a coward. What a scam. Let me pause the hadith for you. And actually, I have a, I have a different hadith from Ibn Hanbal too. And that one is even showing the grade of the hadith. Let us, let us share that one. Hold on. Here we go. Let me put it on the screen. Let us get him more busted. This is Musnad ibn Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And this is hadith number 22461. The, the, the Quran will come in the judgment day as a pale man. Now what is the grade of this hadith? Hey Abdul, you claim that you speak Arabic. It says that a hadith like this is possible to be authentic and hasan. And then I can explain to you here what it means for huwa ba'id. Because the Muslims they say, oh it's not authentic. It says that. It says it is hadith, hasan, and even possible to be authentic. And let us show you how we can prove that. Because we are not done. This is the same hadith, and this is the official Islamic page in Facebook. As Sunnah Nabawiya wa Sahih al Hadith. The authentic hadith. And here they are posting for you the Quran in both in English and in Arabic. Let us go down and read the translation made by Muslims in English. The Quran comes in the day of resurrection like a pale man, says in, uh, uh, to the owner, to his owner, Do you know me? I was the one who stayed up at the night, and the light of your wages, even if he was a dealer behind his trade. I mean, you can read the, the rest of the hadith. And there here it says, the hadith like a pale man, he his color is variable of his common body, whatever, etc. But here they are saying, the reporter is Abu Huraira, the source is the book of al Alabani, and then the page number or the hadith number is 2829, and the rank is Hassan or Sahih. Is what? Is Hassan or Sahih? Are we done? No, we have even bigger surprise. This is the book of al Silsila Sahiha by Al Imam Al Alabani. This is the book name. This is the author name, very well known, funny scholar. Volume number seven. It says here, Hadith number 2829, the Quran come as a pale man. What is the Hadith? Sahiha, Sahih. And get this guy busted. And let us use Google Translation again. Remember, he said this is a very weak hadith. The Islamic scholar they say this is very Sahih hadith. Which one of them we should trust? Even the book name is the correct authentic hadith, which means everything there is correct. So it is Sahih hadith number 2829. The Quran will come in the day of resurrection as a pale man. But this potato in the video, he denied it and he said, this is a weak hadith, very weak hadith. Not only it's a weak. Here we ask ourselves a very simple question. Are we going to find one day a decent Muslim who is proud to be a Muslim? He is not ashamed of what his prophet said, so he tried to lie in order to hide it. If the Muslim scholar they say it is strong, it is sahih, why this guy is denying it?